Our guide, Colonel Nenny here. In today's video, we look at a couple of aerodynamic factors which could have a dramatic effect on how well you can keep your twin engine fighter bomber or bomber in the air once you've lost your engine and are trying to make it home in one piece. We all know that on takeoff, as we add full power, the aircraft has a tendency to pull to the left. We counteract that yaw by using right rudder. And as we climb away, we keep that rudder input. But what happens when we get to level flight? We don't really need much rudder input, if any at all. If we're using the same 100% power as we do on the takeoff and the climb, then what has changed and why don't we need it? The answer is P factor. Nope. That's hydrodynamics, not aerodynamics. There are several factors at work here. As, as the prop rotates, it sends a helical column of air around the fuselage, which impacts on one side of the aircraft. Hence the tendency to yaw to the left. This is slightly more pronounced on a tailwheel aircraft because asymmetric thrust is created because the ascending blade and the descending blade have different angles of attack. Another factor in play here is the torque of the engine. The more powerful the engine, the more it wants to spin the fuselage in the opposite direction. And as we build speed and the tail comes up, it causes gyroscopic precession, which accounts for more yaw to the left as the tail comes up to the horizontal position. Each of these aerodynamic actions and reactions require control inputs, very delicate ones, from the pilot. And now that you know that all these aerodynamic factors are in play, the way to control them generally is with the use of trim tab. Ideally, one on each control surface for pitch, roll, and yaw. And learning to use them correctly is very, very important. If the propeller turns in the opposite direction, as in many Russian aircraft, then the opposite applies. And this brings us to another cool factor. Although these two engines are providing exactly the same amount of thrust, one is actually more effective than the other. And for the reasons already discussed, the airflow down the one side of the fuselage and across the control surfaces is different from one engine to the other. So aeronautical engineers will offset the tail, they'll offset the way the engine sits on the wing to try to counteract these types of forces. Alrighty then, so now let's just imagine losing one of these engines in combat. Is one engine more critical than the other? Absolutely. Besides the fact that you have the tendency for the aircraft to roll away from the good engine, you also have a great loss of airflow over your rudder and elevator surfaces, depending on which engine is out. Lack of twin tails is what makes it difficult for the JU-88 and Heinkel to taxi on the ground. Because of the limited prop wash, one engineering and design solution to this asymmetric uh, thrust problem is to have contra-rotating engines. This effectively means that you don't have a critical engine as both lines of thrust from each engine go down the center line of the aircraft. For a fighter like the P-38, it meant that it could turn equally well to the left as it could to the right. Logistically, this created a bit of a nightmare because instead of having one engine one size fits all, you now had to carry two kinds of engines, lefts and rights, and they could not be used interchangeably. For some details on how to keep your one engine as effective as possible while the other one is shut down, take a look at my complex engine management tutorials. And the last question here is about jets and jet engines. Although there will still be asymmetric thrust when you lose one engine, the thrust line is straight back. P-factor, gyroscopic precession, torque, and slipstream effect are essentially designed out of these aircraft. Meanwhile, back in 1942, we're trying to get this crippled aircraft home. Fortunately, the A-20 Havoc has contra-rotating engines like the P-38. This is my first single-engine emergency in this aircraft, so I'm experimenting a little. 
you'll notice that the engine cowls are open on both engines. They produce a tremendous amount of drag, so we want to close them completely on the dead engine, and we also want to feather the dead prop. With the power up and the ball centered, you'll notice that the rudder is still off to the right, but it's minimal drag. So what is the aerodynamic reason that I choose to make a right-hand turn towards the final rather than a left-hand turn? That's right, I want to reduce the chances of a rollover. The aircraft is flying well despite the damage, and it looks like we're going to make a good approach. We keep a close eye on the speed and make no sudden control movements which might stall the aircraft. We'll keep the power up until touchdown and land on the right hand main gear. And in the background, all those aerodynamic forces are still in play. We just have to understand how to control them. And once again, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you found that interesting. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, found it helpful, please like it or subscribe, or if there's another topic you'd like me to cover, please leave a comment.